Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. Before we jump to Health Matters, our partnership program with the Warren Alpert Medical School, let me give you some breaking news. Governor Raimondo has announced that functionally, as we know it, summer is canceled in Rhode Island. All large events, parades, concerts, etc., are put off for 2020 summer. Uh, no jazz festival, no folk festival, no 4th of July parade at Bristol. So a uh, heartbreaker for many Rhode Islanders. We all live for, Rhode I for the summer in Rhode Island. It's gonna be a very, very different summer uh, going forward. I also wanna thank my earlier guest, Dr. Michael Fine, former director of health, for his daily visit with us and the newly named chair of the political science department at the University of Virginia, Jennifer Lawless, who always gives great insights into what's going on in Washington. Now, let's jump over to uh, Brett, Dr. Brett Owens from University Orthopedics in the Brown Medical School. Uh, Dr. Owens, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so a different world. You, you know, you work closely with Brown University Athletics as University Orthopedics has for years. You're right there on the sidelines for lacrosse games and other sporting events. You're the go-to. Uh, what's your life like? Well, it certainly has been a big change, especially uh, for Brown Athletics. They were they were there, and then all of a sudden they were gone. So um, it certainly makes our spring very different. Um, it has raised, as you know, these are unprecedented times, and um, you know, sports certainly has taken a, a back burner at every level. Both, you know, we, of course, the professional athletes. Uh, get most of the attention, but college sports has been a huge hit, and it goes all the way down to the youth level. Um, certainly, uh, it's unique, unprecedented times. Yeah, I caught myself the other day watching cornhole competition repeats on ESPN 17, looking for any ability to connect with any kind of competition. So uh, I, I, you know, I'm as pained as anyone else. What is it? You know, let's look to the positive. Here's a world in which kind of we get a timeout, right? This, you know, feels like almost a year is not gonna count towards our birthdays or something. Um, what is the opportunity for athletes though, especially anybody who's played any level of competition has gotten beat up, bruised, maybe have been uh, uh, under your care for surgery. What's the opportunity to take advantage of for, for athletes? Well, certainly for, for injured athletes, it, it, it does make things a little bit easier uh, in my office when I'm working with, with athletes that are recovering from knee or shoulder surgery, um, there's, there's very much always that sense of uh, you know, the fear of missing out. And that's not there, but certainly there's a lot of missing out to go around. Um, you know, athletes want to be able to be back at full performance. And I think potentially using this time now to, to really refocus their, their rehab efforts um, uh, is helpful. But for all athletes, it's extremely frustrating. Um, I feel most for obviously the professional and Olympic level athletes that may have trained their whole lives and now their whole training schedule is thrown off. But at, at every level, it's extremely important. We see, you know, college athletes with eligibility issues that are now, you know, they're, sometimes their careers uh, may be changed because of, uh, because of this. Um, you're going to see a whole change in behavior and maybe some separation. Those young, maybe even youth, high school, college athletes, have an opportunity to, to develop new skills, get stronger, get bigger, yeah. fix those broken uh, uh, issues. Uh, and some may sit on the couch and watch Netflix for the summer. Um, what do you talk, how are you talking to the athletes that you come in contact, whether they're youth or college? Oh, you're very right. And I think how the individual responds says a lot about who they are. Um, you know, obviously, like I mentioned, the professional and collegiate athletes, you know, this affects everyone. And, uh, you know, I have friends who, you know, their, their kids, their one year to, to, to shine. A lot of my, my, my patients, uh, it's their one year to kind of help with the recruiting process. And this really does throw a, a wrinkle into everyone's uh, plan, so to say. But um, in general, you know, conditioning can be challenging right now. I think redoubling your efforts, focusing on the things that you can control. You can't control COVID and all the impacts on society, but you can control your own conditioning, whether that's aerobic conditioning, running, biking. Some people are getting really inventive with their ability to uh, – some folks that don't have weights available to them are, are, are working out with uh, uh, milk jugs of water and sand, et cetera. And yeah, we're refocusing on core. In addition to you mentioned diet and maintaining body weight, we are going to see some people that unfortunately have been more sedentary. 
than they usually would be and are going to try to come back at potentially a higher body weight. And that impacts not just athletes, but also us middle-aged folks that are trying to stay in shape. Um, I, I spoke to Mike Martin, the head men's basketball coach, the other day on a call, uh, kind of unrelated to training, just on internship programs for student athletes. And we, were, and we were talking about, he said, listen, a lot of my players, you know, basketball players generally are from you know, mid-level socioeconomic uh, levels or, or might be poor guys. And uh, they don't have weight rooms uh, at their homes. They don't have access to those things. He said they're all doing a million push-ups and are going to look like Herschel Walker. But what's some of the ways, are there good online tools? Does University Orthopedics help with those things to be able to help athletes get bigger, stronger, stay in shape? Yeah, for sure. There are a lot of online tools and primarily right now focus on sport specific training, usually through these at the youth level through each sport society. Um, uh, some of the national organizations as well. Some of them are free, but some of them, of course, are for young athletes that are participate in travel teams, etc. Have, have daily Zoom uh, skill challenges. Uh, but you're right. There are some there are some sports where conditioning workouts or everything and doing that on your own is fine and there are some people that like hockey players that can't get on the ice there's only so much that they can do in their house but but you're right and, and you know, basketball is a great sport if you can shoot all the time but if you don't have access to uh e even to a hoop for some people um it certainly limits their ability to continue their development uh, it's dr naismith peach basket time to bring back and pound it up on the uh on the old garage um, old school yeah, <laughs> real old school. Um, uh, Dr. Owen, talk a little bit about how frustrating it's been for you. You know, elective surgery, and I'm, you know, m much of sports medicine probably falls into that bucket as you're trying to separate uh, your patients from uh, those carrying the virus and many of the healthcare uh, uh, infrastructure in Rhode Island. Are you looking forward, you must be, to get back into much more of a daily routine that's now looking somewhere around the first or second weekend in May. Yeah, so we are trying to hopefully adapt to a new normal. It seems like uh, every day, every week, there's been a new wrinkle to that. But um, you know, we've continued to to work to take care of our patients. Our patients are our number one priority, and primarily their safety is our priority. So we work and communicate directly with the Department of Health, and you know, they've strongly encouraged us to continue to to take care of our our patients as an outpatient. Obviously, we've transitioned to telehealth for many, but we've also continued to do semi-urgent surgeries uh, for people that you know, otherwise would have to be uh, at the hospital. Our goal is oftentimes to keep people out of the emergency room, out of the hospital, so that they can focus on COVID. We've continued to stay active at our East Bay Surgery Center, which allowed us to take care of semi-urgent uh, patients as well. But yes, there are a lot of patients that have you know, uh, put off uh, uh, surgery and um, you know, we are looking forward to being able to take care of them uh, going forward. Where do you see things going? Uh, do you anticipate uh, permanent changes in how you work from a standpoint of being an uh, orthopedic expert and how you interact with your patients and their families? Sure. I think there are going to be some positives that come out of of this pandemic in just about every field, right? Um, the, the ability to, you know, I'm able to do this right now with you via Skype, uh, which, you know, I have four kids at home that are doing distance learning as well. And certainly um, going to that 100% is, is, is not the goal, but there will be some things such as telehealth. I mean, those are were certainly a, a challenge previously due to insurance restrictions, but uh, our ability to provide care remotely to patients that sometimes have a challenge to come in is is much more streamlined now. And though it's one thing that will hopefully continue going forward. And we, I'm fortunate to take care of a lot of people from afar too. And so certainly for follow-up care of certain patients that sometimes will fly in for surgery, being able to adequately care for them. A lot of my college athletes as well will go back to school, et cetera. Um, and it's nice to be able to communicate directly with them. Even though it's over video, it's still not as ideal as being in the office, but um, now that that's streamlined, I think that's one kind of take home message that we're hoping to continue going forward. But obviously, yes, we want to be able to get back to where we were before, like, like everyone is. 
Um, if I had that shoulder that I've been pushing off that was injured, that knee that really needed to get sure. cleaned up, what, what's the timeline on making that phone call to you guys? Sure, that's an individual decision. You know, we continue to uh, facilitate patients getting in. Uh, again, we are trying to, a lot of people want to do telehealth visits and we're facilitating that as well. You know, fortunately we're working with the insurance plans and um, they've been very flexible as far as our ability to get imaging uh, and sometimes even to uh, order physical therapy, which can be done either remotely uh, or in person. So there are some things that can be done as well uh, to help facilitate the process. Uh, and then when the patient hopefully eventually will be able to come in and see us face to face in person, uh, then a lot of that groundwork sometimes is, is laid. So I wouldn't, I would not discourage you from, from reaching out. We'll work to get you in quickly. Um, for someone like me who played lacrosse for more than 30 years, pretty much everything is broken. Is there sure. an opportunity to come in and get everything fixed all at once? Uh, complete, uh, you know, redo, change everything out. Is that an opportunity? I don't know, Josh. If you're looking for the fountain of youth, and uh, if I find it, I'll let you know. But no, it is it, certainly, you know, that, that's a lot of big part of our practice is 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 the you know the aging, middle aged athlete, recreational athlete, and you know, certainly tissues break down over time, and um, I'm going through it as well. And you know, uh, we will. Um, you know, Again, most people will work it out on their own, and then when they get frustrated with it, they give us a call. We're happy to get them in also. It is definitely a weird time, but we continue to see patients in person and via uh, telehealth or video teleconference visits, um, and, uh, and that's our goal. Uh, Dr. Brett Owens, I want to thank you so much uh, from University Orthopedics and the Warren Alpert Medical School. And, and last word to you, what should people know? Stay safe. Be informed. Yeah, we're, we're continuing to follow every day uh, the changes, and you know we're trying to take care of our patients in a safe fashion and be good as citizens. Also, um, so uh, appreciate the the hard work of all the people uh, in the trenches. Dr. Owens, thank you so much. For everybody else, uh, stay tuned to more. There is just constant flow of news every day here in Rhode Island. Uh, somebody asked me, what's it like? I said, it's like election night every day, every night, every morning for the last 60 days. Stay tuned. We'll be back uh, later, but also some interesting breaking news that we expect out later on the economy. Thanks, Dr. Owens. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe. Thank you for having me.